thanks for joining us. I'm Natasha Anthony. We've probably all experienced something like this. You're in a different location, away from home, away from Charles County, and you're shopping at a retail store and think, hmm, this is nice. Why don't we have one of these at home? Well, today we are going to explore that question and learn what the process is for attracting retail businesses to our county. Joining us is Kelly Robertson Slagel, the director of the Charles County Government Economic Development Department. Kelly, thanks so much for joining us. Thank we are looking for forward me. to having a wonderful conversation with you. So we often hear from citizens the choices they have here for retail shopping, especially grocery stores. We want retail spending to stay local and for people to feel good about shopping where they live. How is your department thinking about this issue and working to address it? Great question, and thank you for having me. I'm really excited You're to welcome. be here to tackle this topic. Definitely. Uh, we definitely hear a lot and, and get a lot of uh, feedback in regards to grocery stores, when we're going to get them, what types. Um, so our department, the Department of Economic Development, um, is charged with bringing new industry. One of the things, we mm -hmm. do several things, but one of the things is bringing new industry um, into the community. And as is in regards to grocery stores, um, we have really put a focus on that. We've heard loud and clear um, from our residents, uh, many of whom have moved in to a relatively new and have moved into our community and are used to having the higher end grocery stores, the Harris Teeters, the Wegmans, the mm -hmm. Trader Joe's from the communities that they um, previously lived in. Definitely. Um, so we are uh, working, I would say the biggest thing that we're doing is we are working with our developers um, that are actively uh, looking at either purchasing property within um, our boundaries or are actively developing properties. Okay. So when they are out looking for tenants for that new uh, development, that they are looking at grocery anchors uh, to be able to uh, actively recruit them. Um, when we work with those developers by making sure that they have and understand what our latest demographics are, mm -hmm. um, why Charles County is a good location. Uh, for them to come and locate. I see, I see. G great point. And I'm, I'm happy that at least, you know, you're really tackling the issue. Now, on social media, we see a lot of questions about the county government's role in the development of shopping centers and large grocery and retail stores. Can you um, explain to us the process for the development and construction of new stores and shopping centers right here in our county, in Charles sure, County? Sure, sure. Great. Another great question. Um, you know, when businesses, especially retail, are looking to locate in any community, not just Charles County, but any community, they um, work with what are site selectors. A lot of times, especially with larger brands, larger national brands, mm -hmm. they have a real estate arm within their own corporation. Um, but some contract that out with site selection agencies. And what they do is those site selectors go out and look at communities all over the United States, okay. um, in our case. And they have a checklist of um, kind of, um, I'll say, a wish list of opportunities and things that they're looking at in each one of these communities okay. uh, based on who their customer dynamic is. So um, d based on that, they look at each community and they basically grade them. I see. And, and look at things like population density, what is the quality of the location, um, meaning are they, is it road frontage, mm -hmm, is, mm -hmm. is there a, a stoplight out front. Um, also looking at um, household income, looking at how old is the community. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Charles County's, third, on average, you know, we're 39 years old. Oh, okay. Charles County, and we're getting younger. Um, we have 169,000 residents as compared to a Prince George's County or Montgomery County that has over a million residents. So we're, we're relatively young mm -hmm. and we're relatively small as compared to some of the other markets. And those, um, would you say that those are pluses for us, that we're relatively young and we're, uh, you know... Well, well, I would tell you um, our median household income, I would grade us as an A++. Awesome. Our age, 39 years old, also an A++. Our density, our population size, we're probably more of a D. Mm. If you think about it, stores, retail stores, and especially grocery stores, they are looking for a lot of people in close proximity. They need to make sure if they're going to invest in a community, they the have attraction. the population mm -hmm. to be able to support it. Definitely. So we're a little young, mm -hmm. I'll say. 
So to put it into perspective, and I like to use this um, to kind of put it in perspective, Prince George's in Montgomery County, who I mentioned earlier, that are well over a million residents now. They had 169,000 residents like we do today in Charles County in the 1960s. So that puts it in perspective how much they have grown and how much larger they are than we are. And that is where you see the Wegmans and the Trader Joe's and some of the Harris Teeters. Um, now, Harris Teeter, I will tell you, is coming down into the Southern Maryland market. Okay. So we're, we're, we're very hopeful that we are going to see potentially a Harris Teeter in our market sooner rather than later. So that's some good news. Um, but that kind of puts it into perspective um, and helps hopefully the, the listening audience understand that where we compare to some of those other markets. Awesome, awesome. So I know Ms. Legal, you did, you did mention um, that they look at, you have site locators. Mm -hmm. um, you have site locators and they're looking for certain things, demographics, they're mm -hmm. looking for income. Now, when retailers are looking for locations to expand, what market factors and con considerations would convince them to open a store in here? Mm -hmm. I know you said, you know, Harris, let, let's mm -hmm. just take that mm -hmm. example of mm -hmm. Harris Tita. What, what, what are they looking for? So they are looking, certainly looking for the things that I previously mentioned. They're also looking for what we call traffic counts. Okay. Um, so traffic counts is, is folks that are, that are transversing in and out. I mean, we say traffic counts, think of cars coming mm -hmm, in and mm -hmm. out. So when the federal government, and we absolutely still are primary bedroom community to the federal government, which we're very proud of. Okay. We have fantastic <laughs> residents, and that's what really helps with our household, median household income. <laughs> So when the federal government was predominantly teleworking, that was fantastic for Charles County because it was keeping those folks within our community. So they were buying their lunch here locally, they were running out and doing their errands and grocery shopping locally, and keeping that money locally. And that's what we want to see. Yeah, we right. really want that money to stay locally because that's being tracked by those Harris Teeters of the world and, exactly. and that sort of thing. Yes. Now when the federal government said, hey, we got to get you work. back in yeah. the office, mm -hmm. even if it's part of the time, you know, our hearts skipped a beat a little bit because that meant that part of the time they were going to be taking that money outside. I mean, the reality is a lot of times it's more convenient to hit a grocery store on your way home from Washington, D.C., which then puts that money possibly in Washington, mm -hmm. the district mm -hmm. or in Prince George's County. So that's why it's so important. And I tell folks all the time, it's so important to doing. keep that money local because those Harris Teeters, the Wegmans, the Trader Joe's, not only are they looking at traffic counts, they're also looking at sales volume mm. of their competitors in this market because that tells them a lot about if this is a good community, a good market to come and locate in. Is it, is it profitable? You know, at the end of the day, it comes down to money and cents. And they Definitely. are businesses just like every <laughs> other business that are located here. So the more that we can show that this is a valuable, good, profitable location for them, the better off we're going to be to be able to get them to come into our community. Awesome. So, listeners, you heard that. We have to show that Charles County is a good, profitable um, community so that we can attract more businesses from the outside. So maybe just saying on your way home from work, do not stop in Washington, D.C., do not stop in PG County. Let's just shop exactly where we live, <laughs> right? Yes, so, always good to buy local. Definitely. <laughs> so another question that often comes up, especially at community meetings, um, Ms. Kelly, on the western side of the county is, will we ever see a grocery store return to Bryan's Road or Indian Head? What, what's your take on that? So we're really excited about the opportunity of the new o o Oasis Fresh Food Market, okay. which is currently under development now in the town of Indian Head. Um, it, was, it will be the first <laughs> grocery store in that Indian Head area, which certainly will serve as Brian's Road as well, in over 23 years. So this is a really big deal. Uh, we're very excited about the plans there. Um, certainly for the viewing audience, if you want to find out more, uh, they have a, fa a social media presence on Facebook as well as a website. Okay. So I encourage you to go there. there it shows um, re renderings of the new building, talks a little bit about what some of the offerings will be. So that's Indian Head. Brian's Road, we continue to actively work with the developer and the owner of the Brian's Road Shopping Center as well as continuing to have conversations with the Food Lion um, uh, folks that from Food Lion over there okay. um, to not only try to recruit somebody to go in, but also really encourage that Food Lion location to up their game. I mean, they have a great 
Uh, they got great community <laughs> over there, which is certainly thriving and, and continuing to grow. There's some exciting stuff yes. going on on the Western side. So really in economic development, it's our job to really tell that story and say, this is what's coming. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I understand that we kind of went through a wall there. I'll call it that. <laughs> yes. And, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But we have some exciting stuff to come. More businesses that are coming into that area. We have the Western Charles County Technology Corridor, which is getting ready to get launched. I mean, there's 131 businesses located over there, which just fall within the Western Charles County Technology Corridor. So there's a lot of new opportunity on the horizon. And we are, we're actively working with some, some grocery chains to tell that story. Wonderful. To get them to look at that side of the county again and hopefully be able to get somebody back in there for those residents. Awesome. And that, that that's what we call good news for yes. Indian Head and yes. good news for Brian's Road. Yes. Now, um, in social media discussions about bringing specific retail con- um, establishments into the county, we mm-hmm. have seen suggestions about citizens contacting the corporate offices mm-hmm. of the desired stores and asking them to build in Charles County. Is there anything that, you know, residents mm-hmm. or viewing audience can do to help attract the businesses they, they want to see right here in their communities? Oh, my goodness. I love this question. Um, you know, I am a big proponent, or I should say our, our team is a big proponent of our citizen advocates. I mm-hmm. mean, absolutely. I mean, they can hear it from us as the economic development team. But to me, it is reinforced Mm -hmm. when a local community expresses their desire and their welcomeness for any type of retail chain to come into our community. So I would say absolutely a lot of, you know, retail chains. If you go to their website, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, Mm -hmm. there's usually a link that says, if you would like us in our community, fill out this form. So definitely, I encourage folks to go ahead and do that. And talk about, from your perspective, why Charles County is unique. What makes us unique? That's right. Um, talk about your own experience <laughs> and, and your own stories. And that really will help to reinforce the demographics and kind of the data yes. that we provide. Um, it, it puts a personal touch on it. So I, I absolutely encourage uh, folks to do that. And if you want to have, you know, help or you know, get some insight or ideas on what you can put, just reach out to our office in the Department of Economic Development, and we can certainly help with that. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Kelly Robertson Slagle. She's the director of the Charles County Government Economic Development Department. Now, we were discussing the ways how we can make Charles County a bit more attractive to um, retail businesses, just to ensure that we are the ones Tapping into the resources of the teacher, the you know the Harris teachers and the Wegmans, just so that we can bring a little bit more vibrancy, a little bit more, I should say, diversity into our shopping here in Charles County. And thank you so much, thank you so so much for sharing with us all the developments that's happening in Indian Head, Grinds Road, even all the great work that the Economic Development Department is doing to ensure that Charles County is an attractive, viable community to all these um, retail stores. Thank you so much. Um, That's all we have for this episode of Charles County Now. And I'm Natasha. Thank you so much for joining us.